Jane Lo and I'm at Black Hat Asia here in Singapore 2024 and with me today I'm very pleased and very privileged to have Lugina Kamastra who is the senior uh, malware researcher with Gen Digital who is going to be sharing with us on the uh, threat landscape when it comes to uh, recruitment scams. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, thank you for being here. All right, yeah, so... Uh, you know, uh, before we uh, had this interview earlier today, I actually received one of these uh, job offers, uh, semi-legitimate job offer, I guess. And so I think a lot of our audience would have also this kind of experience when it comes to receiving these kind of very tempting job offers that offer very easy working uh, conditions, but for a very high salary. But of course, I think um, a lot of us wonder, what, who are these uh, threat actors and what are they after? Is it money? Is it you know, our personal information? So who are these people? Are they cyber criminals or nation states actors? Uh, well, it's, uh, <clears throat> it depends. It can be, uh, in our case, it was uh, a Lazarus group, uh, one of the North Koreans, uh, APT group. Each APT group has a specific motivation. For Lazarus Group, it can be money, mm -hmm. and for other APT groups, it can be like uh, spying, you know, getting more information. Uh, but in this case, we saw some research about this group, and they were going after, for example, money. So they were literally targeting <clears throat> developers who were uh, developing in cryptocurrency exchange. And that's the specific group. They are going after money. So their more motivation, I think, was in this case money. Uh, but again, it's really tough because we are protecting our customers and we don't know what kind of customers we are protecting. So, and uh, just, it's also important to say we are not protecting enterprises, but our end users' customers. Everyday people like myself. Yes, exactly. And that's why it's a recruiting scam, you know, because they are really going after normal people mm. because these normal people can work in different agencies. So I just want to ask you, you talked about North Korea uh, actors, right? Uh, the Lazarus group, and of course, uh, they were very famous for uh, doing this one of these recruitment scams when it comes to uh, the crypto world, uh, Axie Infinity 2020, 2022, where they made away with, I think it was almost 500 million uh, US dollars uh, worth of cryptocurrency. So you were saying that uh, the victim profile is, um, you know, it's not just professionals, like cybersecurity professionals, like in this case, the Axie Infinity uh, had, they were targeting a senior sort of developer, right? But it's also everyday people like myself. And, um, and as you say, the motivation varies. And in some cases, it could be um, money, it could be uh, personal information, it could be intellectual property, et cetera, et cetera. But they also, um, because of the different victim profile, it's different channels that they also make use of, like LinkedIn, for example, yes. WhatsApp, <laughs> Telegram. But the LinkedIn is very easy to like uh, get access uh, to find the people. But from the uh, attacker perspective, attackers needs to develop some specific sophistication to not be detected from, for example, LinkedIn like gaining the files, you know, in order to, to be stealthy, so not get caught mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the LinkedIn site, for example, let's say. So they sometimes change from LinkedIn to WhatsApp. I think there is some idea behind this mm -hmm. and the motivation. So it's not that, oh, because they want to change. I think every, every step from the attacker perspective, they have idea, they have a motivation. There's a reason behind it. Yes, right? there's okay. always a reason behind this uh, change. From our side, we don't know which communication platform they used. But from previous research about this, we know they, they used WhatsApp and we know they used LinkedIn just to contact the person. So that our audience can get a rough idea of how different you know, this scam is compared to other sort of uh, cyber scams going around, right? There's the famous one like the romance scam, uh -huh. where also the, the threat actors build out a trust relationship and then they get you to download you know, an app and something. Is, it, is the recruitment scam kind of the same? Obviously, uh, there's also like a, a step involved where they build up trust and relationship with you know, the victim. Yes, uh, I know about some scams where um, uh, they are targeting men, men only. Uh, so, and, uh, <clears throat> and they're creating this rapport with this man to create some relationship or like, you know, romance. And then they're starting to say to him, listen, there is a really good uh, opportunity to make money for through cryptocurrency. 
and then you know look how i'm earning so much money because i'm investing and you can earn money after creating this rapport this sending screenshots these are actually cryptocurrency change that I mean, the first side looks really legitimate. But when you, once you put money, even if you earn millions, you can get out the money out of there. That's so right. it can be, uh, yes, you can, on, you can see numbers on the, your screen, but in the reality, when you can want to pull out the money, they're saying you have to pay $1,000 to pull out money, for example. And it happens, uh, it's happening all the time. And they're trying. And, and even it's funny that it's not like in one day, they are creating rapper even for like, more than one day, like weeks. So that's motivation is money too, but it's a peanut. I have to say Lazarus. That's different because they are really target for a huge amount. We are talking about hundreds of millions. The tools that they use in terms of like getting to gain access to the computer, they has to put a lot of resources in order to evade these uh, uh, security solutions, security features. So what you're saying is that uh, the recruitment scans that you see or has observed, the sort of the monetary sort of aspects is normally in terms of scale is a lot lower than the recruitment scam that you have seen that's conducted by uh, nation state actors. Oh, uh, that's very interesting. Then, in in your case, right? Tell us about the case study that you have. You know, or, or the research, right, that you drill down into Lazarus. So in this case, they target a, I guess, a specific. Uh, I cannot say uh, we are not hundred percent sure. We are never hundred percent sure since we are not collecting uh, the information about the victim. Uh, but the attacker is not going to spend so much money for a for a person who is not interesting. I can imagine that they have a specific pool of people where they are targeting by this recruiting scam and they choose just few of them, they need to do some reconnaissance. So they gain to access, let's say, to the 10, uh, to all of them and then they will choose specific person where they put enormous resources to, to evade all kind of security solutions, IV vendors, EDRs. I think they are like, they are interesting in specific I think company, and uh, they gain access to these individuals, and they find out, okay, this computer is a work computer. It can get access to the specific com company, and they will go through that way. So, so what you're saying is that their motivation really is uh, to gain access into the victims, um, privilege access into the victims' net organization. Yes. So how do they approach the... So you are saying that they have a, a that's pool what of I, big victims. That's profile. what I think. Imagine uh, sometimes it's much easier to exploit a victim through recruiting and yes. then like put enormous resources to, to get to the network, huge network. It has a SOC team. It's all, again, you're fighting against like the company who put, I don't know, millions of dollars to protecting themselves. And then you have specific individuals who sometimes used working laptop as a impersonal, right? So you receive emails and... Um, it's a bit like a phishing, well, it's social engineering. Social engineering. Like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a recruitment that's, scam, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, exactly. So that's how they throw social engineering the specific person and then they find out, okay, this uh, person is, uh, is working for this company because et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They they are 100% sure they have their method to find out with who they're working for, what kind of software they use. So in this case, in your case study, how do they um, trigger this recruitment? So they send a job offer to this individual? Yeah, uh, what, I, what I can say, uh, that's how I would do that. I would contact them through LinkedIn or WhatsApp, or I can even send an email. But... I'm, I would avoid sending to corporate email. So okay. in this case, we think it was from the personal ah, right. uh, accounts. I, see. I mm -hmm. think because it was it is a recruiting scam. You're, even if you are if you want to recruit something, someone, you're not sending uh, a re the offer through the company email. So, uh, of course, yeah. No, I get quite a lot on LinkedIn. So actually. you're yeah exactly you. <laughs> LinkedIn is the best. You can find a lot of people there. I said that's the best way to approach people. So the victim, um, say, is interested in the job offer, and then what happened after that? There was a communication. 
sending maybe job description, mm-hmm. it, it would look like a normal legitimate uh, job offer. But then, or this potential employee has to show some skills, right, mm-hmm. in order to get this job. So the attacker uh, sent uh, to a victim a challenge or some case study to, to solve. And uh, the, the, the attacker forced the victim to, to execute it or to, uh, in our case, it was ISO file. So it, it forced the, uh, the victim to mount this uh, ISO file and execute uh, one specific uh, executable which leads to a, oh a case study. It's, it even is not that sophisticated. It's just the different approach to get the access. I guess um, it's all, all these social engineering scams or schemes, they target a specific uh, human vulnerability. Yeah. With, with the romance, it's about the need for, you, you are looking for a life partner. With recruitment, you're looking for a job. A job Which, so. With higher salary, of course. They, yeah, that's right. They, uh, imagine if you get job offer to email address and just... Uh, here is the job offer, and here is our challenge. You won't open it, right? But if you is starting to create a rapport and a huge communication, trying to create a trust. So in this case, then, what happened in the end? To be honest, I was quite shocked. Uh, shocked uh, in uh, in research, we don't see the whole chain, like the attack chain, like to gain access, to uh, persist uh, in the system, and they have to move somehow, move laterally in the network, but. Uh, in this case, happened in, all in one computer. So that was interesting because they put such a sophisticated tool set in order to, to blind security features. In, in one case, uh, everything was, was fileless. It means that everything was happening in the memory. So they didn't drop, uh, of course, in the initial, they dropped uh, uh, the malicious loader on disk. But after that, Everything happened flawlessly, and what was interesting that they uh, they were exploiting the vulnerability in the uh, Windows driver in order to get um, read-write primitives, which means that they were able to blind some security features and security solutions. Where in this case they were blinding uh, such as EDR, CrowdStrike, Windows Defender, and Let's be honest, it's not very, not very easy to bypass this kind of security products because they are living mostly in the kernel space, not in the user space. So you really need to get uh, to the kernel space. And again, in order to get there, you need, again, bypass some uh, operating system mitigations. And that's why it was interesting, because they put enormous resources to find a zero-day vulnerability, which we reported to Microsoft after that. And, uh, and then the sophisticated rootkit that was blinding these uh, solutions. And now to the, um, to the huge question motivation, so what do they want it? What I think is that this individual was working for a specific company that the attacker had a really huge interest to get to the, to the network because uh, we realized that the amount of resources the attacker was putting to to blind these security solutions. It was very sophisticated. I'm just thinking, you know, for our audience who may have been uh, potential targets, right, of such Uh, scam, how would they go go around understanding that they have been, you know, infected? Well, uh, first of all, just don't uh, jump on anything that looks uh, really uh, flashy and luxury. So... If I'm going to get an offer for, uh, let's say, $500,000 a year, then it's something suspicious mm-hmm. because, like, let's be honest, uh, uh, for example, in my positions, I don't think uh, somebody is earning that kind mm-hmm. of money. There's no free lunch, yeah, basically. E- yeah, exactly. And um, ask more questions. What kind of company is that? What are uh, products that they are using uh, or uh, selling? And... Um, do more due diligence, basically, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's more, more, more due diligence. About the company. Yes, about the about company. About the company That's that right. it's trying to hire you, let's say. Mm. So, And um, having a video chat, like, is this person real? And That's right, trying yeah. to find this guy on LinkedIn. If this really is working with the company, how long he's there, how many connections. The company web page can be made rather Spoof, quickly. Yeah. Yes, very quickly. But the connections that they are gaining on LinkedIn and what kind of activity he has, mm. it's 
Yeah, you it's, cannot. It's, yeah, uh, it's, it can be spotted. Uh, the history of yes, the social history. media presence. I think that's one of the best um, way how to spot that something is, is fishy. So basically spot it like at the beginning, during the social engineering phase, rather than wait until, you know, the yeah, technical right. infection has happened. Uh, I would say I will be, I'm going to be very honest. It's really hard to spot it, uh, such a sophisticated attack, you as a normal user. So that's why you are using um, uh, security solutions. Uh, the attacker is always step ahead. So at the end of the day, if they really want to target somebody, they will target him and they will get what they want. Be responsible in the beginning because in the middle, it's, it's, you're not going to help yourself. Yeah. So in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, that's, the, that's the, my message. That's right, yeah. I think the keynote uh, this morning uh, by um, uh, David Koh, who is the uh, chief executive of the Cybersecurity Agency of Singapore, says, you know, uh, cybersecurity is a team sport. All of us have a part to play. So it's, uh, you know, it, we cannot leave it to the security professionals, right, to pick up the mess when the mess yeah, has exactly. happened. So we need, we have a responsibility as well as users. Exactly. It costs so much uh, money for a company if you know that the attacker is in the network. And even it's got much more to get rid of him. Well, I mean, uh, you know, just to take a very simple example, when it comes to health, prevention is better than cure, isn't it? When, it, when we say, right? Yeah, so, well, so uh, I'm very conscious of the time, but uh, thank you so much uh, for taking us through, you know, some of the uh, happenings uh, in the recruitment scam uh, space and, you know, your observations when it comes to Lazarus and what they have done in one specific uh, case study. So thank you very much for thank your time. Thank you, thank you for your time, thank you.